Uh, in simple terms, is it possible to zap or electrocute a disease with a low voltage electric current if, and efficiently neutralize it and possibly reverse the disease? Dr. Robert Beck thinks so, and he's not the only one who does. Similar research along these lines was done back in the early 1990s at the Albert Einstein School of Medicine by two researchers, William Lyman and Stephen Colley. The headlines read, scientists say electric current may help fight AIDS. This evening, Dr. Robert Beck, described by many as a highly qualified and very astute physicist and researcher, presents a fascinating lecture on the subject. As to his background, he is widely known for his instrumentation of adultered states, his development of state-of-the-art medical electrical stimulators, and his investigation of Tesla electromagnetics. Dr. Beck is a consultant to the Sandia Corporation and senior staff scientist of Irving Research Institute, and he is consultant to the U.S. Navy, officer of surface weaponry on the subject of ELF, that's, in, that's electromagnetic field, that's what it means, detection. He has also designed and built extremely sensitive magnometers for the Navy. Dr. Beck is founder and president of Monitor Electronics Research Corporation, an alpha uh, met metrics company, a firm manufacturing ethical biofeedback equipment. He owns the basic patents on low vo voltage electronic flash and several patents involving electrical optical systems. He is currently investigating psychophysiology and electromedical modalities. This is sure to be a most interesting program. Now please join me in giving a nice warm Granada Forum welcome to Dr. Robert Beck. If five years ago anyone had said that I would be standing before a group or any group telling you that there had been a breakthrough in medicine that's probably the, mo probably the most significant thing made in this century, I would have said this is con, this is snake oil, this is preposterous. But for the last five years I've spent my own money, no government grants, no research funds, no university funds, in investigating a thing which literally has proven to be the most remarkable thing for all diseases that I have ever heard of personally. And I've been in this field for about 40 years. Are there any medical doctors here tonight? Uh, chiropractors? Health professionals? One, two, three, four. The reason I'm asking this is that I have a stack of IRB studies, and the doctors will recognize what these are, laboratory reports of major hospitals around the United States. And until these are peer review published, I'm not supposed to show them to anyone who is not a medical doctor because of patient confidentiality. Now, how many of you have read that there is no cure for AIDS? We all have. That is an absolute lie. There has been a perfectly workable, 95% accurate cure for HIV and cancer and herpes and hepatitis and Epstein-Barr and about a dozen other incurable diseases, which was invented on March the 11th, 1990, at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City by a Dr. Kelly and Wyman's. And what happened to this breakthrough, which is far more important than penicillin, antibiotics, anything you can name, it has been suppressed. And why has this information been withheld from you, which you can easily prove for yourself? Don't take my word for anything here. Check it out. 
I found recently that the mafia, the mafia, the mob, owns about 51% of major pharmaceutical houses, as well as working the other side of the track with the illegal drugs from South and Central America and China. The medical cartels in this country will charge you from fifty to two hundred thousand dollars if you have terminal cancer and this is for surgery and chemotherapy and radiation and hospital care. But I think I have one prop here that I want to use now. Nope, somebody stole it Sunday, but I usually hold up a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. That packet of chewing gum cost me a nickel when I was a young man. I paid a dollar thirty-two cents for that package of five sticks of chewing gum at the Chicago airport recently. That was a dollar for the gum, taxes, handling. Are you listening? The price of that package of chewing gum is every penny that it takes to cure, and I'm not supposed to use this word because only a doctor may use the word cure, shame on me, most of the unknown diseases in America today. And why haven't you heard about this? Because General Electric, Westinghouse, other companies have billions of dollars tied up in x-rays, CAT scanners, MRIs that are leased to health management organizations. And for a dollar thirty-two cents, you can cure yourself without doctors, without pharmaceuticals, without medicine, certainly without surgery, certainly without chemotherapy, any drugs, any herbs, any no-sodes, any homeopathic remedies, you can do it for yourself, and it has been done. And the last time I was at a hospital who was doing these studies, would you come up here for a second, Miss Health Professional? Or if that embarrasses you, uh, where's the boss? Oh, okay. <laughs> People keep asking, why haven't they heard about this? Why aren't there hospital studies? There are hundreds of them. You probably recognize this laboratory. We're not, suppo we're not supposed to say it out loud. Out loud. Immunodiagnostic mm -hmm. laboratory, San Leandro. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, these are PCR tests, polymerase chain reaction, the test that Dr. Kerry Mullis won the Nobel Prize on in 1993. We started with a group of about 24 age subjects in 1995. Their counts, this one was 573,982 on August the 30th, 95. This one was 418,000, etc. Now let's take one of these along. You're not supposed to mention the name, although this chap came forward and said that I may use this information in any way. At this date, August the 11th, 1998, he had only about 3,063 particles of HIV in his blood. But now, as this test develops, if we look at this test, PCR, on 11-395, this was several months later, the count was less than 100, which means that it was zero as far as the test was concerned, right? Mm -hmm. We have foot and a half stacks, thank you very much, of these reports where every single one of these full-blown AIDS patients, every single one, although many of them were on life support, many of them required attendance to lift them from the bed onto the potty, these people are symptom-free now. Every single one of them is back at work. Not one of them has the symptoms of AIDS. So when you read in your newspaper, the baseball game this Saturday, the proceeds will be de donated to a search for AIDS. That is an absolute lie. 
<clears throat> there is and has been a cure for AIDS, all AIDS, a cure for cancer, about 95% of it, a 100% cure for Epstein-Barr, hepatitis, lupus, about a 50% cure for herpes, and I've been funding these out of my own pocket. I have absolutely nothing whatsoever for sale. God has been exceedingly good to me. I think I'm going about my father's business here, and I'm paying for it myself, and I am giving it to the world. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. I see several old friends in the audience. Ivan and I were quite close when I was co-chairman of the Psychotronics Association and the Dowsers and the pretty kooky gooks, uh, things like that. But we go in our paper, which is available back here for our zero. Uh, Jane is standing up, the blonde young lady. She has the papers. The only thing I'm doing is getting my Xeroxing money back for having printed these up and not charging a penny for the $85,000 worth of research. The paper is entitled, are you ready for this? Take Back Your Power. Here it is again, Take Back Your Power. You do not need doctors, nurses, chiropractors, herbs, pharmaceuticals, surgery. Only if you're going along with the politically correct solutions do you need these things that your neighbors are, have been depending on for lo these many generations? The paper was entitled Blood Electrification and Immunity, that means immune system restoration with microcurrents, a proven, startling, rapid, inexpensive, and safe discovery for positive, positive incurable remissions. Now we found that this information has been suppressed. The doctors who discovered this, and let me tell you about the discovery. In 1990, they put a couple of small platinum wires into a petri dish that contained highly infected human blood. And the infection here was a very, very strong dose of HIV, which is supposedly the cause of AIDS. They found that if they had when they had electrified this blood, uh, the HIV could no longer attach to any receptor sites in the blood. That means the CD4, the T cells, helper cells could not be infected by the HIV. Your paper's free, Wayne. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Now, they predicted in an article which is in your paper, you, you don't need to take any uh, notes tonight, the only mention of this incredible discovery was in Science News, March the tw uh, 30th, 1991, page 207. And don't ever get old, you'll need these. Shocking treatment proposed for AIDS. And it tells about how these two doctors had given a paper on this process, uh, William D. Lyman and his colleagues, uh, the research team at Albert Einstein, their experiments described March 14th in Washington, D.C. at the first international symposi symposium on combination therapies showed that the shocked viruses lost the ability to make an enzyme crucial for their reproduction and could no longer cause the white cells to clump together. Two key signs of viral infection. The only papers which I was able to find that got into the American press were Science News, March 30th, 1991, an article in Longevity magazine, and these are fully reprinted in your papers, uh, electrocuting the AIDS virus. But what happened in the Longevity article, which was December 1992, page 14, Dr. Culley said, it will be 15 years before this process is ready for human experimentation. We have been doing it, sub rosa, with patient consent for over five years here, and we have the test results to prove it. 
And every time I lecture, about a dozen people came up. We had 800 people in one room on Saturday and say, Bob, this is an 80-year-old attorney. He's on my tape. You can hear him tell you this in his own voice. I was sent home to die. My cancer had metastasized all through my lymph system. I was told to go home and make my will. I, at the most, had about two or three weeks to live. Uh, were any of you there when this man grabbed the microphone and gave us? Usually there are two or three people who heard this gentleman. He's 80 years old and an attorney. He said, I went home and I made my will, and I saw your article in some magazine. I think it was 73, so it's been republished in dozens of magazines. He said, I did it. I am now free of all cancer. My biopsies are clean. My CAT scans are clean. I went back to work, and having been an attorney, I had to work 16 hours for a few months to catch up for all the time that I was in intensive care. Now I'm jogging three miles a day and there were tears running down his face. We've had women who have had lupus for about 10 years, barely able to make it from the couch in front of the television to the bedroom to the potty. They're back at the malls now, spending their husband's money, walking around, being able to hold jobs full time. Do any of you know Linda Wright, who comes to our Delzers meeting? She brought in a clean blood test one day and said, my doctor had to send this to two different labs. He's never seen a person with clean blood after that person has had lupus, had been tracked for about several years. We have dozens of these people, and not one of these people went to the doctor for the cure except the people that are on this IRB, Institutional Review Board study, at a hospital in Huntington Beach in Newport Beach, California. Now the point is, in my humble opinion, and we can put anything against this because we know it's true at this time, when I first started this I thought this is kind of interesting. I've looked into 500 things that never worked. The Rife machine never worked. Hulda Clark's machine does not work. Uh, many, many, many of these devices work only marginally. And I thought, I'm about to be taken in again. I have built Lukowski multiple wave oscillators, as you know. I see some very old, dear friends in here. I've built almost every electromedical device I, uh, since the, well, I've been in California, which is since World War II began. And these things worked at best marginally. But the thing which you can build for yourself, there is nothing you have to buy the circuit diagram and all of the instructions for building this are in the paper. This is the one I designed in 1991 to make an experimental study with and uh, an electronic store. Of not, I get not one nickel from the tens of thousands of dollars of these kits they've sold. There's a parts list on the back of the page, page four, that tells you, even if you don't know what a resistor is, or a condenser, or a relay, take it in, set it on the counter at Radio Shack, and give me one of these, 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 and these, and it'll come up the total price, retail, for one. If you buy it this way, it costs $49.24. If you build it yourself, it'll cost $15 to $20. And this machine will not only make colloids, which is the most powerful medicine known to man, which is why the FDA has stamped it out recently, it will put this small electrification into your blood, which will neutralize, now I hate this word, my doctorate in physics was 1955, my engineering degree from USC was 1948, and I was taught never to use this word, but I'm going to read something to you shortly that you will not believe until you see it with your own eyes. This little device, And no, I did not build this. I do not sell them. This is made by SOTA, S-O-T-A, Instruments in Vancouver, Canada. And if you want their telephone number, you might want to write this down. This is not in the paper. It's 1-800, it won't cost you a nickel to find out about this, 224-0242. One more time. And no, I do not get a nickel 
of this company's proceeds. 1-800-224-0242. And why is this device on the market today? Russ read my article in PACE, that's a Canadian publication, P-A-C-E, Planetary Association for Clean Energy, Andrew Mikrowski, and he built one of these because his wife had chronic fatigue syndrome, had Epstein-Barr so badly that she was non-functional. And if any of you were at the National Health Federation this weekend, you saw this beautiful lady at the booth with Russ. She's up and around. She came around to me with tears in her eyes. She said, I had been to doctors, everyone in the U.S. and Canada that I could afford. I am totally well today. I haven't a trace of this because my husband built this little box for about $15, put it on her arm, this is the way they work, and a couple of electrodes connect this to the uh, pulse points, the pressure points on your wrist, and that's the radial artery where you feel your pulse. I'll hook this up later if there's time and show you exactly what you do. And the ulnar, U-L-N-A-R artery where you feel the other pulse. When this box is turned on and these little lights are flashing, red and green, that prove that your battery is up, it's reversing polarity so it can't possibly harm you, your body, your cells. It puts a small electrification into the body that according to the 14 U.S. patents, these are legal government documents, remove all, not 99.999%, but all, parasites, viruses, fungus, microbes, pathogens, everything in that blood that does not belong there, that was not there the day you were born, are eventually, eventually being a couple or three weeks, neutralized and are discarded by your body, dead or alive, by the uh, spleen, in case it's the lymph tissue, the kidneys and the liver. And this is darned exciting, but wait, let me show you how the hospitals that ran to the patent office to get protection on this elephant and plan to do business. Now just hold on, you've got a big surprise coming. I theoretically set these things out before I started. I don't know where they are, but Ivan, would you come up here and look over my shoulder for a second and make sure we're not doing a fasty? For those of you who don't get the paper, we're reading from U.S. Patent 5188738 that was presented to Dr. Colley on February the 23rd, 1993. You're absolutely right. And this describes a process, as do 14 others from Harvard, MIT, various, stick around, this is going to get cute. You can get this patent in any patent office, have it faxed to you, have it uh, sent by a patent deliverer. We're reading on uh, page one, column one, we're going to read about here from lines 31 or two, in which he says, because of this problem, the problem he's mentioning here, and it says so in the body of the text, there is no known antibiotic, uh, antibiotic or vaccine for any of these incurable diseases. Because of this problem, the present uh, invention has been devised to attenuate any bacteria, virus, including the AIDS, HIV virus, parasites, and fungus contained in uh, blood. 
blood contributed by a donor either for transfusion or it's put back into the opposite arm. That these are rendered ineffective for infecting a normally healthy human cell. And here in column two, line nine, that virus, <clears throat> that bacteria, virus, fungus, and or parasites contained in the blood or other bodily, inf bodily fluids are rendered ineffective to infect or affect normally healthy human cells. And then they go on and on and on in this patent, which has a number of granted claims, and before these claims could be granted, they had to provide the patent examiners with massive proof. Uh, here, for example, treatment of virus in media at 100 microamperes for three minutes has been observed to substantially attenuate, render ineffective. The AIDS virus, similar treatment. Now there's been a cure, a known cure, and it costs $1.32 per patient. There's no money in this if they're trying to sell you combination therapies for twenty to 60000 a year, but look what they do. And this is what's going to get you, Ivan. Figure one on sheet one of six shows a hypodermic needle going into the arm of the patient, the blood being sucked out of that arm, passed by a couple of little electrodes connected to a battery, plus minus, and then either returned to a bottle or put in the other arm, like autodialysis. Uh, in other words, they take the blood out, neutralize it, drive out all of the pathogens. Now that's going to take you months of sitting in a chair with these things stuck in your arm like chelation. Or, let, let's see what they do here. In figure eight, and going on to sheet four, they have designed a number of little bitty electrodes arrays, electrode arrays that contain a lithium battery, and this shows one of these implanted in the brachial artery of the arm. They cut the arm open surgically, implant this little battery array. The batteries last a month or two. They then cut the arm open and take this out, plant this little device, and here's a picture of it. And we're still in patent 5188738, a legal U.S. document. And this is going to cost you twenty or thousand, twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Look like the real McCoy. That's this real thing. Thanks, Ivan. This and thirteen other patents, because they decided to dis, uh, divide up the elephant here, like uh, General Sarnoff, Dave Sarnoff did when he got the RCA patents, the Armstrong and the others back in the 1920s is going to cost you a lot of money. But if you have the price of a pack of cigarettes or one packet of Wrigley's chewing gum, you can do it for yourself without any medical intervention and you will get well. The latest circuit is on the second page 10 the very back of this paper, and I really suggest that you get this paper because it has a lot of work, it has a lot of information, it has the exact precise locations that we have found best in many years of research for placing the electrodes to get the maximum current into the blood. It is almost as though God the Creator had left a backdoor approach to the problems and that the adversary, like the Holy Spirit, is within. The Bible says, look within, not without. And this time, the adversary is within. The aliens in your blood are the thing that's holding down your lifespan to about 70 or 80 years. We knew that many, many generations ago, according to the sacred texts. They lived to be several hundred years old. Solomon, David, Methuselah, etc. So we've rated about a dozen different medical textbooks, including Gray's Anatomy, and we've published the exact spots of the, 
where you can access the lymph tissue where these germs are going to be hibernating after you're totally well and get a clean bill of health, in about three to five years you will reinfect yourself because many of these viruses are latent, they're germinating. And with this information and these circuit diagrams and these instructions, we have literally given you back to yourselves. Now we're going to show you all of this before I leave here. This is not my opinion anymore. We have enough proof that it is a statement of fact that we can bank on it. If you are too lazy, too stupid, too electronically impaired, or too frightened to build your own, there are 40 known companies, and probably 100 that I know nothing about, that are building these things full time, and they're getting the most remarkable reports back when I do meet these people. And no, I do not get a nickel from any single one of these companies. And all of this information is in your paper. Now, what else do we have to watch for here? Nobody has ever to this day died of AIDS. Did you know that? They've died of the opportunistic infections, pneumonia, carpacy, sarcoma, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that can attack, ruin your body when your immune system cannot handle the load. In fact, it's called HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. AIDS is acquired uh, immunodeficiency, AIDS syndrome. Now, this is the only way that I know of. I know the people that have written the books on ozone therapy. I won't mention their names. I know the doctors that are using all of the herbs and drugs. I have talked to the people who worked with Dr. David Ho, who was on last week's Time magazine cover as the scientist of the year, who has discovered that if you use two or three of these chemotherapy agents at the same time, you have a cocktail effect, and it reduces the HIV count, the PCR count, in the blood tremendously. But what he didn't tell you, and I think I'll read this. This was in the uh, Los, An Los Angeles Times, December 10th, 1997. And it talks about David Ho, Dr. Ho's, uh, I'm sorry, 1996. Drug combo knocks HIV down, not out. An amazing thing happened. They took some of these patients that were on combination therapy, which incidentally cost twenty to $60,000 a year. As soon as they stopped taking these cocktails, they're called, or combinations, they got immensely higher elevated, up in the millions and billions age counts, as though these chemotherapy agents, AZT, DDI, DD5, etc., had held this viral load down in the blood as long as they were taking it. The minute they stopped, it rebounded. Many of the people were critically ill, and they had to put them back on it immediately. So once you start this cocktail therapy, as it's called. You're stuck with it for life as long as you live. And as you know from the International AIDS Conference in Japan last year, Okinawa, <coughs> they found that none of these AZTs, et cetera, prolong the life of one single AIDS patient one day. I see many of you have read these papers like I have. They're simply a promise. They're engineered to get your money while they give you hope. I was beaten up and bloodied. I was hit over the head. I had blood running down my face by AIDS Act Up. David Miller, it was, that was running this crusade in New York City in February. He called the hotel, told them if the hotel allowed me, this is the Hotel New Yorker and the Hotel Pennsylvania. They had the combination meeting at these two hotels that they, AIDS Act Up, would burn down those hotels. So they gave me a bodyguard, but he wasn't around there all the time. They said, Bob, do not use the front door of any hotel here. Go around back. Use the service entrance. Use the one under the sidewalk. Never go out the front door of this hotel 
use the side entrance, service entrance, delivery entrances. And the last one was there, and I had to run out front and get a shuttle to take me to the New Jersey airport to bring me home. There was a guy standing across the street with a video camera, and a guy that hit me over the head and bloodied me. And I didn't chase him down the street because my knees aren't very good. I don't have any cartilage in them. But uh, when's the last time you saw me, Ivan? About three years, four years ago? You notice anything that's different? I lost 130 pounds. I weighed 290, and I have pictures of me to prove it. My hair on top was thinner than some of my old good buddies here. I had a nice little fat fringe around the outside. As soon as I got rid of the adversaries, the aliens in my blood, my immune system took over. When I got rid of the half a pound or so of parasites that every man, woman, and child in America, if he's more than four days old, is carrying, a newborn baby in four hours has breathed enough air to become infected with Candida albicans. If you live in America, there are 140 known indigenous parasites that any medical parasitologist will tell you live here and in us. If you live in Africa or the tropics, there are 500 identified known and maybe half again that many that are unknown. When we got these parasites out of my body, I did, wearing this thing on my wrist, an amazing thing happened. I began losing weight like crazy. I thought, my God, have I got stomach cancer? Am I wasting away with something? No, I was in better shape than I was before I started. The parasites, this is a theory, about 30% of the parasites that live in human beings, and these can range from 14 feet long if they're a tapeworm down to microscopic size, which is why they have to use microscopes to do the stool analysis if you go in for a check. These parasites were setting my appetite. If you'll think about this for a minute, stay with me. It is not what you eat or how much you eat that has anything whatsoever to do with your weight. It is how much of what you eat you store as fat because the parasites have changed the P51, the leptin, and about five or six known neurotransmitters from the hypothalamus, the apostat, to feed them tomorrow. Many of these parasites have coexisted with mammals, apes, elephants for 20 million years. And the anthropologists will tell you they find them. Whenever they find a carcass frozen in the ice flows, these things have had parasites for about as long as man, however it might be, has been on the planet. These parasites have learned to use you as a meal and not kill you because then they're going to die themselves like Ebola. It runs its course in a couple of weeks, E-B-O-L-A. Many of these viruses do that, but these parasites almost kill you and use you for a meal the same way as we send cattle to a feedlot before we take them to market. And when these parasites vanished from my body, and this is provable by dark field microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, any doctor that does this analysis can prove it. You don't have to take my word for it. I lost all of that weight. And before this time, I had offered $10,000 cash currency under the table to anyone who could get this weight off of me. I had tried hundreds, not hundreds, but dozens of diet plans. I had tried these uh, canned meal, Jenny Craig type adventures. I had been injected with pregnant mare's urine, gonadotropin. I know some of you have been through the same things. I had taken legal, legal methamphetamines to control my appetite. I had been on the protein sparing fast where we drank glue to rebuild our muscles as we were losing the fat. I had tried everything until I had nearly killed myself. And until I found the true cause of what I believe is, well, about 30% of the uh, people who are overweight, and this was certainly me, I was terribly embarrassed to find the airline stewardess running down the aisle with his seatbelt extender 
because the seat belt wouldn't fit around me. I couldn't sit in a booth in a restaurant because I'd have to sit in a chair, etc., etc., etc. Now, uh, the lady in the back of the room, Jane, had an operable cancer when I met her, or shortly after I met her. Uh, stand up again, Jane. Thank you, dear. She said, I'm going along with blood cleansing here and not the chemotherapy and radiation that the doctor had said that if I do not have, I will surely die. And her daughter was just outraged. Kathy and her mother just about had a knockdown drag out because her mother didn't do all of this chemotherapy and have her hair drop out and her stomach. Well, you, you've heard the stories. Now she's totally well. Her last several physicals, biopsies and CAT scans have shown not one speck of cancer anywhere in her body. Neither has, <laughs> neither have dozens and dozens of terminal cancer patients. We always have some at every talk that I do. Uh, is there anyone in here who has tried this device and found that he's now clean of cancer or herpes or anything? Okay. You'll be hearing about this in the future. My attorneys have told me to stay off of all talk shows except the underground. Is, has anyone heard me on Roy Tuckman KPFK? One, two, three, four. For the people listening to the tape, that's about 12 people in the room. Roy lets me tell it like it is. Roy Tuckman, God bless him. He's enriched my life on giving me the details of the man-made viruses, the New World Order, I wouldn't have known about these things because I didn't read these books until Roy perked my interest. So even if he looks a little liberal to you, maybe he's doing a marvelous job in getting the people given back to themselves. Now, why does this work for cancer? We started out working with viral and microbe and uh, parasitic diseases. When oncologists in the East began reporting many, many, many cancer cures, we had to have a telephone conference between about four or five of us. Now, what's really happening here? This, I don't believe it until I see the medical proof. So, I guess you know that about three months ago, Explore magazine published an article entitled, Total Cancer Emissions Through Blood Electrification Combined with Silver Colloid. And this article, this two pages, is printed, reprinted in its entirety in the paper that you should be taking home with you because you might need this in your medicine cabinets when a lot of these man-made viruses are going to be unleashed by the New World Order. And I guess you have been privileged to hear uh, Leonard Horowitz at this very fore. This man is doing magnificent work. His book, The Emerging Viruses, etc. I met him and had my first talk with him down at the National Health Federation this weekend. He's a gentleman and a scholar, and he is right! Social Security, let's start, let's take it easy, does not want you to live if you get to be 65. Now, I'm way past that. I don't act like it, but I am way past that. I'm in my 70s. The director of Social Security, I will not mention his name because he picks me up at the airport when I'm in Washington and drives me where I'm going. I've stayed in his house. Says, Bob, we want anyone who reaches 65 to be stored like cordwood in an old age home, given mind control drugs like Valium, and let him die because Social Security is bankrupt now. It won't be bankrupt in five years. It is bankrupt now. And if you restore perfect health to these people with a device that will fit in your shirt pocket, the job market will not absorb the people getting out of college today. The, even if McDonald's has a smart cash register, they can't add and subtract. They can hardly write a coherent paragraph. And you want to get these people with experience back in the job market? I said, hell yes. I was 65 nearly 10 years ago. Another problem, this steps on the toes of all the vested interests. 
They're expecting to make hundreds of thousands of dollars off of you, health management organizations, insurance companies, hospitals. If you own a boat, that thing is written into the budget of a boat builder down there in San Pedro. He's going to see you come in there someday and spend a lot of money. But if you do this for yourself, it'll happen. You will get well. There are 17 of us that I know of, and I know about 16 of them personally, who this day have immortal blood. Now, this is a rather dramatic claim. Let me tell you what it means. Toward the end of last year, there was a dark field microscopist. You know his name. He's world famous. He's the fellow who trains doctors all over the world to use this type of technology for diagnostic work who invited a chap in who had been on one of these blood cleaners for about six months. And he said, let's look at your blood. So he pricked his finger, put that drop of blood on the bottom of the cover, C-O-V-E-R slip, put that cover slip on a microscope slide and looked at it. And he said, you don't have any background clutter in your blood. Of course, they couldn't see viruses. This was a light microscope, and this had about 3,000 magnification, back illuminated. He said, just a minute, I, I must have done something wrong. So he stuck another finger, stuck another one. Then he went to the earlobe, made a slide, and said, what have you been doing? Anyone who has ever come to me, man, woman, or child, in the last 13 years, you can see the parasites, Many of the uh, germs, microbes, bacteria swimming around in the blood. You don't have any at all. And Mike told the other Mike, well, I've been on the blood cleaner. So this Dr. Mike said, well, give me some of those. I've got to try them with patients of mine. I don't believe you. He did, and they worked. Now, in Colorado, blood is considered toxic waste, hazardous waste. It must be picked up and disposed of, incinerated, by registered toxic waste disposal people. He had thrown these three or four slides in this box underneath his uh, laboratory table in the basement of his home. I've been there. Jane and I have met the gentleman. He looked down at this box about 27 days after he had drawn the blood. He wrote the date that he drew it, the name of the subject on the slide, put these slides on his microscope. That blood was still alive. The half-life of human blood on a non-sealed microscope slide underneath a slip is about two and a half to four days maximum. Twenty-seven days had gone by, and the red cells were swimming in the plasma exactly the same as the minute he had drawn that blood earlier. It had not crenated. The fibrinogen, fibrin reaction had not set in. It had evaporated around the edges. Now let's get to the point. One month after that, this is 50-some days later, those slides had still not been picked up by this chap. He put it on the slip. The blood had circled the wagons. There was about a half a millimeter spot in the center where the cells had not evaporated. The slip had not been sealed. The ones he's working with now have been sealed with colloidium, Vaseline, etc. So the uh, moisture in the blood doesn't evaporate. But the people he has looked at, he's now decided to get into this, he's using the blood cleaners in his practice, have immortal blood. Now what does this mean if the adversary is within? He might not be a man with a red tail and horns out there somewhere in the number 666. Just as the Holy Spirit dwells within this temple, so might the adversary, at least the aliens that have evolved with us over many, many moons, are in there, and you can see them if you go to a dark field microscopist. If you get rid of those, who knows what is going to happen? What happened to me? You're, well, we have pictures with Vince where I'm kind of shiny. Ivan has known me forever, and Wayne has known me forever, and 
Do you remember when I was heavier than? Oh, yes, it's not funny because I lived with this for a long, long time. I would have given anything to lose that weight. You were in a wheelchair. I was. I was in a wheelchair. I had been given up for dead. The doctors who came to see me, friends of mine who were MDs, who hadn't made a house call from Beverly Hills in 30 years, were coming down to my apartment in Costa Mesa saying, Bob, uh, you better dispose of whatever you've got. You'll never walk again. I was given, well, so many tests. I had I brought doc, Dr. Alexander Everett out here from Washington, paid his way, put him up in the Red Lion Hotel. He worked on me until he said, Bob, I'll have to go back now. There's nothing anyone can do for you. And I was in a wheelchair, and I still use that thing for swap meets. It's a little electric cart because I don't have any cartilage in my knees, but I'm sure as hell not dead. And my libido will just never you mind. <laughs> Everything is working well again. Bless you, child. Go and sin as little as possible. <laughs> so I'm here to share this information with you. I have nothing for sale. There are people who are selling things. I'm not one of them. Part of that is I believe God's work should be given freely. I expect to get my reward somewhere else. I hope I don't come back to this planet of painful endeavor. I have a lot of theories about this. And also, the FDA has come to my door with drawn guns at 3 o'clock in the morning. I have been eat, beaten up by the people who are supporting the pharmaceutical houses and don't want a $1.32 cure for AIDS. I've had a lot of adventures, and I'm going to share one more with you, and then we're going to open it to questions. We have several major problems. What I have told you tonight is so incredible that it's basically unbelievable. Five years ago, when I would try to tell people, look, why don't you just try this? I will give you the equipment. I've built up about a dozen of these. They're free. Take them. Try them. Oh, no. If they worked any, any good, our doctors, the priesthood would have told us about it. You think that they don't know that a patient cured is a customer lost? Let's say this again. A patient cured is a customer lost. And if you take back your power, the power over all diseases, and this tells you how, you're out of their grasp. You're out of the grasp of the computers, etc. The other problem is the death wish. Have I got any more time or are we up? I was going to speak when you asked for questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll repeat them for the tape because I know the PA is kind of iffy. The second question, the problem, is the death wish. Now, these are not my numbers. They're the best psychologists, psychiatrists in America. They agree with Carl Simonton and Stephanie back years ago. You know who they were? They were the people who discovered the will to live was a tremendous factor in the cure of cancer. He was a radiologist in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. He came out here, took some mind control classes, got into the metaphysics of disease, and totally changed his life. Eighty-five percent, once more, of the population has a death wish. That death wish was planted in those people before they were four and a half years old. They go something like this. My Sunday school teacher told me that man was originally walking with God in the Garden of Eden, and that Eve ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It certainly wasn't an apple. And they were cast out of Eden, heaven. They had to work by the sweat of their brow, and they had to experience pain. And from then on, all mankind has been born under original sin. We have to suffer to get to heaven where we get our just desserts. And the more we suffer, the more gold stars on our gluteus maximus. You've heard this version. It goes on and on and on. Remember the old Queen for a Day show? The woman who had ten sick kids and a husband with a broken leg got the washing machine and the woman who had eight sick kids and her husband was still barely able to drag himself to work, didn't get anything, were rewarded 
sympathy, martyrdom, suffering. That gets the most grease. Those are the squeakiest wheels. In 1963, I published on a device called the Lukowski Multiple Wave Oscillator. Wayne knows about it. A lot of you in here have seen it. I think we, you took it home for a few weeks. That did work on some cancer patients. It absolutely did. One very famous cancer patient was running a TV show at that time. At midnight, he drove his car on the Normandy entrance the wrong way onto the Hollywood freeway, and he killed four other people when he was in a headlong collision with the car coming in the opposite direction. And that was on my conscience, because I did not realize that once we took his crutch away from Bill, he had to commit suicide. Here's a man. Another man, hypothetical, who's lying in bed, getting the best of care, his insurance is running out. George, what could uh, you be getting out of having cancer? No, nothing, nothing. Well, what about your next door neighbor who died six months? Oh, well, my goodness, he was getting close to 60. He knew the company was going to retire him. And good grief, if he'd gone back to work, he'd have to compete with all those younger engineers who were just out of college. And, uh, wow, his wife is bringing him chicken soup now. The kids are being polite. They're not screaming around him. In other words, these secondary gains create a phenomenon known as defeat the healer. We've had people on our IRB studies. I have a briefcase loaded with these things of cured cancer and AIDS patients who have dropped these machines in the washing machine accidentally out of their shirt pocket, who have let the dog chew them up, let the kids play with them. These are Freudian subjective ways of defeat the healer. We have had people deliberately not comply, which means you put this thing on your wrist after you have detoxed about two hours a day, 120 minutes a day, for about three weeks. You'll go back and surprise your doctor but don't tell him what you've done because I want to stay out of jail. The FDA will never approve this device, but if there's anyone in here who wants to play with this and get immensely better, we have a couple of guidelines that our legal department wishes to share with you. Again, we're on the bottom of page four of your paper. We're reading from the Code of Federal Regulations, not city, not county, not state, Federal Regulations, Book 21, Article 807.65, Subparts D, Exemptions, Paragraph D and F. Now, I bet there are health professionals in here who have never come across this, so listen up. Exclus uh, excludes and exempts from regulation Licensed practitioners, including physicians, dentists, and optometrists who manufacture or otherwise alter devices solely for use in their practice. Now, if you take one wire off this printed circuit board and then solder it back, what have you done to it? You've altered it. But listen up here. This is getting old hat, but how many of you people have looked at a menu in the last month to see what your restaurant was serving? Come on, let's see it. I hereby pronounce you researchers. <laughs> Listen up, researchers. <laughs> We're now in uh, paragraph F, Code of Federal Regulations 21807.65 excludes and exempts from FDA regulation persons who manufacture, prepare, propagate, compound, or process devices solely for use in research. Aren't you trying to see if this isn't going to grow hair back on your head? You're researchers. <coughs> research, teaching, or analysis, and do not introduce such devices into commercial distribution. And this and the freedom of speech, my First Amendment rights, are the only reasons that I'm able to stand in front of you today and give you this information that I feel must be the most valuable information you've heard in this lifetime. Because if you do want your family to live, if you do want your children 
your friends to be healthy, not sickly and weak. Do this, it does work. This is not my opinion. It was not my invention. It was invented by a, a medical doctor at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I am just the guy that's pulled it out of obscurity, tried to get it to you, although people have gone into libraries with razor blades and cut this paper that was presented at the Joint Conference on Combination Therapies. They've cut these out of the journals, out of the proceedings. Ed Evans, whom you know, when he was still alive, and I searched 32,000 computer papers, CompuServe, the other networks, using the descriptors electrification, electroporation, blood, AIDS, HIV, not one shred of the original paper was on any network computer program anywhere. We spent quite a bit of money doing this. I can assure you that if you look for this in the legitimate, accepted, politically correct literature, you're not going to listen. You're not going to find it. But this goes on and on and on. I could keep you here all night. I could t train you how to do this, but all of the information you will ever need is in your paper. We even tell you the problems, the death wish. We tell you under no circumstances whatsoever, while you are doing this for about three weeks, touch anything that has any garlic whatsoever, garlic oil, garlic salt, garlic butter, in your salad dressing or food, because garlic, when it gets into the blood, is a deadly poison. Did you know this? You can drink rattlesnake venom, and it won't hurt you. But don't get that rattlesnake venom into a wound or a cut or an ulcer. You will die if you don't have an anti-venom. Garlic has a compound called sulfone, S-U-L-F-O-N-E, hydroxyl, which passes the blood-brain barrier. That means if you rub a clove of garlic on the sole of your foot, in about two minutes you'll smell it on your wrist. You know this. It carries past the corpus callosum, poisons both brain hemispheres. I discovered this in the 1970s when I was personally the largest manufacturer of ethical EEG, electroencephalographic biofeedback uh, equipment in the United States. And people would come home from, uh, come back to a class, doctors that we were training to use this, and be clinically dead on the EEG machine. We found that that had a little garlic in their salad. It totally dissociates the left and right hemisphere. You can see this by running your electrodes frontal, up here by the third eye, to the occipital, just over this little bump on the back of your head. You want to put your money up? You'll lose. We had this investigated at a Northern California medical college. They found that garlic killed thousands, tens of thousands of brain cells even in the small amount you got in the salad dressing. But it doesn't matter. You've got billions of trillions of cells in your brain. And people with the brain the size of a walnut, microcephalies, uh, hydrocephalies, etc., can be mathematical geniuses, musicians, and what have you. Now, this is the most politically correct, incorrect thing I can tell you. Most people think garlic is a health food. It isn't. The people I've gotten off of garlic because we've shown them that bullets used to be rubbed in garlic in World War I and II. They didn't have to kill anyone by hitting him in the heart. If he was just nicked, he would die. When I bought a blowgun from Jim Solomon up at the Global Sciences in Denver, he took me out in the hall and said, Bob, if you want to kill somebody, just get a clove of garlic. Push the point of your dart gun, your blowgun projectile, into that, and he will die very rapidly. The CIA is trained to use this trained to use oleander leaves, which are an alkaloid. Six leaves will kill a human being. Trained to use water infusions of nicotine, which is another deadly poison in the blood. So we have published a list, which we don't have here tonight, of things you do not take. Beta carotene is one of these. Vitamin A is deadly poison if the dosage is elevated. And what I'm doing here, for those of you who are researchers or health professionals, yowing. Castor oil is a poison. Uh, I'm reading a paper called Electroporation. Thank you. 
a general phenomena for manipulating cells and tissues. This work was discovered just before 1993 by Dr. M.D. James C. Weaver, Harvard MIT Division of Health Sciences and Technology, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Cambridge, 02139. And I'm reading from the Journal of Cellular Biochemistry, Book 51, page 426 to 435, 1993. And they describe in this paper, and do we have a librarian here who would like to make copies of this for anyone who wants it, who doesn't believe it, who'd like to see it with his own eyes? Chairman, you want to do this? Charge him whatever the Xerox plate. I want to give you this because it describes the fact, as you can see in the summary, that if I take one aspirin tablet, I'm okay usually. If I take 20 to 30 aspirin tablets in the same gulp, I'm in trouble. When you put electricity into the blood and you have a polarity shift, this is called electroporation, and it's fully described in the paper, fully. There won't be any question in your mind after you read it. Those 20 or 30 aspirin that I would take because I have run this electrification might kill me. There's a doctor here in Van Nuys who calls himself an OMD who killed two patients, Frank Gillespie and a woman whom I may or may not have met because he was prescribing Chinese herbs for them because they had AIDS. And he did not realize that if they were doing blood electrification, they did not need the herbs and the herbs might become poisonous. And this is fully delineated in the paper. I see several of them around the room. Feel free to share them if you choose. The other no-no is do not use this if you're wearing a demand-type heart pacer. The electrical signal that's going through your blood, surging through your blood, can cause the heart pacer to beat at a different rate. Normally, it's triggered by the very weak EKG, electrocardiograph, ECG signals. And if this, which goes at four hertz per second, interrupts that, you can be in trouble. If you're wearing a heart pacer, don't do it. If you're taking any garlic, don't do it. If you're on pharmaceuticals that the doctor says you have to have for high blood pressure, diabetes, micronese, diatribe, uh, procardia, any of these things, don't do it until you're off of these medications, and then you'll get better than you can imagine getting. My blood pressure when I started this was 219 as an average over 190. My blood pressure was 219 over 190. I could not leave a doctor's office before he put a procardia under my tongue. He didn't want me to die on his doorstep or have a stroke. My blood pressure today is about 130 or 140 over a low of around 70 to 75. When I started doing this, I had what they called borderline diabetes. I was not on insulin. I was on micro... Uh, well, several diuretics and diatribe, micronase, and a number of other things. My blood sugar ranged every day, even with careful diet, from about 425 to 475. After I had done this for about three weeks, I stopped using my blood glucose meter. My blood pressure, my blood sugar, is down around 150. Well, that used to be considered normal. Now they consider 100 the low normal. But I haven't taken my blood sugar in six months. I feel great. My hair, after using a magnetic impulse device, the follicles were restored. I spray my head with a misting bottle, not a spray bottle, which I got at a beauty parlor for about a buck and a half with silver colloids. I'm going to show you how you can make your own because our wonderful, benevolent, Food and Drug Administration has recently outlawed colloid as injunctions against 27 people who are making this medicine that has been around since the day of ancient Rome. So we're going to have to make our own. I think I'm going to have to cut this short. We can talk forever, but I want to show you something.
This is a glass of water that I got out of the kitchen about the time I came in here. This is a laser light. Cost $29 at Fry's Electronics. I'm going to make sure this does not get in your eyes, so don't worry, you can look at this. This is a glass of water. It has some bubbles on the inside. I'm going to shine this laser light through the glass. Keep it above your eye level so it can't possibly harm you. And you notice that the water is fairly clear. You don't see a lot of stuff. You see a little debris floating around in this water. And I hear that you can see this pretty well in the back. And this is for the sake of the camera if he wants to zoom in. Now, I've taken a single 9-volt battery. I have put a little grain of wheat light, a lamp, in series with the battery and these two silver wires. You can build this entire thing with the silver for under $10. You can carry it in your shirt pocket. If you're traveling through Mexico or Egypt or the Mideast or Africa, do what I'm going to do right now. You can drink sewer water and never get sick. There is no known germ, bacteria, microbe, which will survive what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put these two silver wires in this glass of water. And do you have a watch on, Wayne? Uh, give me about three minutes, will you, and, and interrupt me. This is all it takes. This is tap water. If you buy a bottle of distilled water, it's going to cost about 80 cents. This is Sparklet's Arrowhead. The colloid that you make from that water costs a tenth of a penny per gallon. Multiply 0.1 times 80, it comes out to 800. Okay? The water cost 800 times more than the most powerful medicine known to man, silver colloid. And in our paper, the last half of the paper is about exactly how you make it, exactly how you use it, hundreds of uses from spraying your swamp filters and your cooling system to putting a little of it in the rinse water. You'll never carry infection on your clothes. Animals who uh, have been given colloid will not drink drinking water. We have people who have thoroughbred cats that were spending half of their lives at the vets with runny eyes, runny nose, infections. I began giving the waitresses at the restaurant where I eat on Harbor Boulevard a little colloid. They took it home, one of them, Carla, fed it to her cats, came back in a few days, Bob, what have you done to my cat? Well, what do you mean? My cat is 13 years old. And he's jumping up on the furniture like a young kitten. And he won't drink drinking water unless I put a few teaspoons of colloid in this dish. And since then, we've run experiments where we put two dishes identical, fill them from the same tap. The dogs and cats will not drink from the dish that doesn't have colloid. I think they know something. We list some of these 650. I see we're getting a lot of agreement out here. How are we doing there, Coach? Oh, let's quit now. Let's make this easy. I'll take this magical athame, which came from McDonald's, if I'm correct. I'm going to stir this. Now, you remember what this water looked like, and look, nothing up my sleeves. Now, look at this. I hear a few O's and O's and wells out here. To your health. I drink two or three glasses of this a day. My head hasn't fallen off. <laughs> Nobody in our inside group in Orange County, not one person has had a cold 
or flu or a virus or pneumonia in about three years. And uh, one lady we know had a cold beginning. She put this uh, blood cleaner on and drank a little colloid. It was gone in about an hour and a half. How about a cure for the common cold? Do you ever think you'd look to see this? Okay. Here we are. Hello? This is called a laser. What you're seeing is a Tyndall, named after the physicist capital T-Y-N-D-A-L-L, -L, or the Rayleigh, depending on the book you look in, in Great Britain or America, R-A-Y-L-E-I-G-H effect, where you cannot see the particles of silver, which are far too small to even see with an optical microscope. And when I take this colloid, as I have done, to a laboratory that an analyzes the particle size with an electron scanning microscope and the parts per million by spectroscopic analysis of a given concentration. They will tell me that this is the finest grain colloid you can make, 0 0.001 microns, billionths of an inch, up to 0 0.005. That means that if you buy this much colloid for about $90 at the health fair or the pharmacy <coughs> or the health food store, this much would be about $50 today. You have made a far better colloid than they can make in spite of the fact they will tell you our colloid is better, we work with a secret process, we have a $100,000 machine, we use a Tesla coil in charging a silver plate and we put the Note B flat into the water. <laughs> Bullshit! This is the best colloid. If you want to make it golden, yellow, instead of white, you use distilled water, boil the water, get it up to about 212 Fahrenheit, and as it cools off, you put the battery and the electrodes in it. By the way, all of these uh, blood electrifiers now not only electrify the blood, but they produce colloid as well because we do two things to raise the dead, like Lazarus. We get the adversaries out of his blood with mild electrification, 50 to 100 microamperes. The frequency is 3.92 hertz. That's half of the Schumann resonance, 7.83. We found this is best. I've worked with this for five years. I am so healthy now I can't stand myself. I've been called to wish me Happy New Year, and I started laying my trip on him. But I am, and I can show you my medical records to prove it. And I've got photographs of me when I was fatter than hell and nearly bald. And uh, the colloids prevent secondary infections from attacking your body while you're getting well. This takes about three weeks, that's all. You're well. The third thing we do is a magnetic pulser. And uh, how much time do we have legally here, Coach? Okay, I'm going to go ahead with this because these are things you probably haven't seen before unless you've caught the Whole Life Expo. I like it. This device, <coughs> if you buy it at a health expo, costs $2,700 to $7,000. The brand names are Magnetotron. Um, there are about a dozen devices that allegedly put a time-varying magnetic field into your body to heal disease. Another device was called the diapulse. I thought, how can people <coughs> do their own device for under $25 and have it about 500 times better than one that cost 7000 This device is a Vivitar model 1900 strobe, strobe light, speed light, speed gun goes on the camera. One, two, three. I've pasted a piece of paper over the flash tube so it doesn't hurt your eyes. 
This coil costs about a dollar if you wind it yourself on an old VHS farm, and we tell you exactly how many turns, 130 turns of number 14 to 16. It's on page 6. Everything, everything I know about this I've put in this paper. I'm giving you your life back for the price of the Xeroxing. This coil is co connected with a piece of lamp cord in series with the flash tube. So when the capacitor charges up in the strobe, it takes about three to ten seconds, depending on the life of the batteries, and you push the button. Normally, all of the watt seconds or joules of energy that are stored in the capacitor go through the flash lamp, makes a flash, and you can take the picture and freeze the action. If you take one of the electrode wires off of one side of the flash tube, put this coil in series with it, that entire 17 and a half to 35 watt seconds, one half CV squared, where C is in microfarads, V is in kilovolts, <coughs> goes through the coil. And what have we got here? An occult field, O-C-C-U-L-T. The Webster's Dictionary definition of occult until the last 75 years means hidden, like occluded blood in the urine. Occult means hidden. I can't hear it. I can't smell it. I can't taste it. I can't feel it. What makes me think something is happening in this coil that's going to cure the germs that are hiding in your lymph, your adenoids, your gonads. This is a washer. I got it down at Pep Boys. It's called a fender washer. Now, if you'll stand up and back, you might be able to see this magic. Well, let's get it a little higher. Stop. Well, the lines of flux with a magnetic field, like the alternator in your automobile, if your engine is stalled and the alternator is not rotating in the magnetic field, not one millivolt comes out of that alternator or generator or magneto or dynamo, but the minute you have relative motion, you're generating electricity. This is the way all generators work. Now, let's say that my thymus is not dead, has not been taken out and mummified and put in a jar in ancient Egypt, and I hold this coil over my thymus gland and push the button, or my lymph nodes, and these are all illustrated in your paper, I think it's page 8, under my arms, what have I done? Every time I push this button, I have generated a 19,000 gauss, 19 kilogauss field that has a duration of about 10 to 100 micro millionths of a second. I have a time varying field. Every cell, every fiber, every nerve, every bone, Every muscle in my body is a conductor, as long as it has any salt water in it. I am a conductor as long as I'm alive, and I'm not a mummy. When you cut that conductor with time-varying magnetic flux, you generate a back EMF, just as we did in this washer, and you get about one milliampere, one thousandth of an ampere of current to a four-inch depth through everything that's alive in your body, this is way more than you need to totally neutralize any virus, microbe, pathogen, germ, parasite, fungus that's living anywhere in your body. Now, we have cured many, many AIDS victims, many cancer victims, to have them get sick well, in this case, five years later, 
because we did not get the viruses that were hibernating, were germinating in their lymph tissue, their adenoids, <clears throat> their glands, etc. It would take hundreds of needle insertions with electricity on the needles, which would be very painful, and to get these things in vitro. Why not from the outside of the body with a time-varying magnetic field? <clears throat> you can build this device for under $25 if you build your own. It is fully described on page 6 of your paper. We suggest that if you want to get well, stay well. Do not wish to die of whatever is bothering you now. You build one of these things and use it. And again, if you're too ignorant, too lazy, too stupid, too electronically impaired, have two broken arms, can't read or write the English language, and want to buy one, they cost about $150 from the 30 or so companies that are building these full-time and running as fast as they can to stay out of the way of the Food and Drug Administration because this works. Now here it comes again, boys and girls. Take back your power. You have heard tonight of the most effective way and I stand before you telling you I am not selling you anything. I am giving this information away. We have mailed hundreds of these papers absolutely free, and I have paid the postage. Tonight, I'm trying to get my money back for the Xeroxing, so they cost $5. Before they run out, this is the most valuable information, and you have a question, Ivan. Tell about the negative beatitude, why you're giving this away. <clears throat> I'm scared shitless of the Food and Drug Administration. If I sold anything, I'd probably go to jail. I'm talking about the one that says, Cursed is he who... You know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, let's leave that for a little bit later. I've got to ruminate on this now. I, we're going to throw this open to questions. We could tell you about all the children that were born with AIDS that are well now. We could tell you about... And so we'll turn it over to our host and moderator. Okay, for all questions, you need to go in the back where the audio recorder is and so we can get it on tape. We have another mic back there. So would you just form a line and uh, we'll have our, our uh, speaker stay right here and answer the questions. Can't wait till he's ready. Now before we start the questions, I'd like Jane to come up here. She's been cured of cancer and uh, she has something to say. Jane, did you hear me? I don't know if you're, you're absorbed in a conversation back there. She's on her way. Okay, um, I want to tell you in case Bob exaggerated that I, in April of 1995 I had cancer surgery and I refused the radiation and chemotherapy and I use for the following well ever since then I've been using the blood cleaner the magnetic pulser the um, colloidal silver and I um, and good nutrition I go to Dr. Privatera in uh, Covina and I had a clean cat scan in January of 96 and another clean cat scan in uh, September of 96. Any more? Anything else you want to know? <laughs> oh, I had uterine cancer. A little, a little difficult to, to back up. Back up from that, there's just too much of it, and so it was a good idea to take it out with surgery. Okay? Any questions? Go ahead with the first question. This is for Dr. Beck. Oh, good. Dr. Beck, you've said uh, something that has really astounded me. Um, I knock out a cold within hours with garlic and um, echinacea, podiarco tea, etc. Uh, I take 25,000 of uh, beta carotene a day that has kept my immune system so strong I hardly ever get a cold and I drink I drink uh, Willard water with the castor oil, and I've never felt better in the last six years. Now, are you taking these things? And if you are saying that, I'll believe you, but just, I want to hear it. Should I stop taking those things? I have. I can't advise. Uh, if I gave medical advice, it's a felony in 
California, and I can't use the word cure. But if you're an organic gardener and want to kill everything, and you don't want to get use DDT, use garlic. You know that. It, it's a deadly poison for any parasite, fung, you know, any, any mites, any bugs. They won't come near it. And the human beings we've gotten off of garlic, Dr. Andreas Marx, M-A-R-X, homeopathic physician, and many, many others have gotten people off garlic. They no longer have the low-grade headaches, the confusion, the fatigue in the afternoon. They kiss the ground this doctor walks on. <clears throat> because you will find that garlic is a poison. It has been known... They do not allow garlic in any ashrams, temples in the East. The Church of Scientology even forbids garlic to be taken on any of the ships or the organizations. It's just totally forbidden because they know when people take it, the shamans can no longer do psychic work. Their hemispheres are desynchronized. They've known this for thousands of years. And my advice was simply get off of it for three weeks. Take a garlic clove again, see how you feel, and then you tell me whether you ever want to experience that again. Okay? okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, doctor, are you uh, aware of a mild silver protein, and what do you think of that? And is yes, this, uh... I know, Faber, I know the people who are selling silver protein. It is known that silver proteins are very poisonous for you. Silver proteins consist of silver nitrate, silver chloride, etc. They can dye your skin. The disease that you get when you take silver proteins is called agroria, A-G-R-O-R-I-A. -R -R uh, this protein gets into your skin, never comes out unless you inject little pieces of the, uh, silver nitrate be put in baby's eyes in case they had picked up a birth canal infection. Now they don't use that anymore. And we recommend colloid, which or colloid, depending on how you pronounce it. The preferred pronunciation is colloid, although most people call it colloid. <clears throat> and you can make your own in a far better quality than you can buy because the colloids you buy contain coloring agents, yellow dye, they contain EDTA, they contain honey, they contain plain Knox gelatin to keep it from settling out of solution. And the colloid that we made here has none of that in it. You can drink any amount with no side effects. Does that answer your question? Yes, and the um, colloidal silver that you, you can buy that's so expensive, is this uh, what you have uh, as good or? We have it far better, and all you have to do to prove that is take it to a laboratory. There are a number of laboratories that check uh, silver from photographic shops before they pour the hypo down the drain they electrolytically remove uh, the silver, and if it's over a certain concentration, it has to be considered toxic waste. They're the ones who do our analysis. And we've had this checked by a number of different laboratories. You don't have to buy it. We're trying to give you back to yourself. But yet, there are a number of entrepreneurs who put no silver whatsoever in their product. They set this bottle of water on the plates of a radionic machine like the SE5 or the Vega Tester. They set a certain rate, R-E-T-E, -E, of numbers. They transfer these numbers or this rate into the silver. They put the note, B flat. You've heard this guy. He's lecturing and selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of no colloids. And I said, Wayne, if I buy a bottle of colloid, I want to see some silver in there. When I analyze yours, there is no silver colloid. You claim 0.046 parts per million. I can find none. Now, do you want to talk to my laboratories? Do you want to bet there's anything in this box? He'll fold up and run away. Okay? So that's what I think of other people's colloid, and I've analyzed dozens of different brands. And everyone will tell you his is the best. And <clears throat> they've been Ericksonian hypnotized by upliners and multi-level marketing schemes. And they've got to tell you their colloid is best, because if they tell you you can make your own, don't forget, a patient cured is a customer lost. Okay, another question? Yes, you were talking about the fact that you should not take garlic when you use the blood cleanser because it will act as a poison, etc. How long should you be off garlic before you use this? In the beginning, before we would take patients and on any of our free studies, incidentally, this has never cost a patient a penny, we gave them two weeks to detoxify.
That meant hard drugs, recreational drugs, tobacco, alcohol, cigarettes, uh, aspirin, their headache remedies. Now, yeah, herbs, mostly herbs. Both what about kitchen. vitamin C, some of the other vitamins? Other now, yes, vitamin the, vi the vitamin C is harmless as far as we can tell. But vitamin A and beta carotene are not. We could go down this list for an hour, but we're not going to do it. And now we say detox for two days before you start doing this. If you must take a pharmaceutical, your doctor tells you you have to, and I can certainly not contradict that. <clears throat> we say take the drugs immediately after you have stopped doing the electrolysis. If you do the electrolysis from 12 till 2 p.m. in the day, Take your medicine at 2.10 2, because the electrolysis, the minute it stops, the minute the little windows in your cells close down again and are not transparent to the poisons in your blood plasma, then wait 24 hours for whatever medication you've taken to get on the exponential curve as low as possible, and this is in your paper. But that's a very good question. Thank you for it. Okay, now in addition to garlic, do you have any advice regarding other things such as onions, leeks, other... These are forbidden to people who are shamans, etc., because they have observed for centuries that when they take anything in this family, they're no longer psychic, but they think they are. They think they're channels. They think they're getting the word from the spirits, and they're not. And a day or two after they've eaten these things, they can do it again, which is why they're for forbidden in most practices. But how does it affect the actual use of the device? <coughs> We want to keep you alive. We made our protocols to do the least damage to the sickest person who is likely to use it. We say it might not kill you. A friend of mine who could handle a pitcher of beer on the way home every day had one glass of beer in North Hollywood. He went to the car and wired up and was starting early before the football game started. He drove about a block before he was so drunk he couldn't drive his car, pulled off into a Ralph's parking lot, slept for three hours before he could drive home. That one glass of beer looked like 30. He could handle one glass, he couldn't handle 30 glasses of beer. It's that simple. If you'll read the paper, which I've left with our esteemed host, you'll see why that is. And he can make copies of this. Uh, at Kinko's for about a nickel a page. And there's your medical reference from Harvard, MIT, uh, MIT, et cetera. And there's your answer. Okay, so your basic advice would be to avoid garlic, leeks, onions, anything from that family. Then. I eat them when I know that I'm not going to be blood. I love the taste of them, but I know what they do to my brain waves. And to prove that, get on anybody's encephalograph, a Hewlett Packard, a grass, a Beckman instrument, and look at it for yourself. You will be horrified. But normally you don't know this. You have enough consciousness to walk you through sleepwalking, and you'll still be able to fly an airplane or drive a car. Okay? Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Barlett, what is the effect of this uh, electromagnetic field on beneficial bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. This comes up. We used to say, take your acidophilus, take your lactobacillus, your many, many things, to replant these about twice a month. And some people who have been playing with the colloids say the colloids never get that far. They don't get into the intestine, so they don't uh, kill the friendlies. I particularly prefer the continental brand liquid acidophilus. I prefer this to the tablets, capsules, solid form, and I do this about twice a month whether I need it or not. I think it's a good idea to replant the friendly bacteria too. I know that when you take antibodies, antibiotics like penicillin, <coughs> cipro, ampicillin, you have to do this. Otherwise you'll get diarrhea and disturbances. Very good question. Thank you. Well, I wanted to get something straight um, I'm on um, Adelat. I think that's somewhat like uh, Procardi or Nifedipine. Did you say that you should stop taking those or, or um, say if you took this electronic treatment, say you start on the electronic treatment, you should stop taking the Adelat or Nifedipine or Procardi? I said that, yes, sir. Okay, next question. Oh, okay. All right. If you must take these, 
Try doing the blood cleaning about 10 minutes. If it makes you terribly sick, don't do the blood cleaning ever again until you're off the medication. Here it is again. You're listening? Listen up. It increases the dosage 20 to 30 times. And if you're taking one pill now, and you take 20 or 30, you're going to disturb your heart whether you do anything or not. Don't do it. Stop. It's forbidden to you. Nobody will sell you one if he knows your doctors put you on these poisons. They all have side effects. And they're essential to save your life, but this does it better. Okay, next question. Uh, Dr. Breck, you said the, the blood electrifier was about 95% effective with cancer and like 50% with herpes. Yeah. Why isn't it 100? I'm curious what factors are involved. Because 85% of the people have a death wish, they're going to defeat you. The reason we decided it does work, if you send your spinal serum or your blood plasma to a teaching hospital in Northern California to have them run an assay of the neuropeptides, the neurotransmitters in your blood, Norm Cousins at UCLA, before he died, said, Bob, there are 2,000 known neurotransmitters. Now, wait a minute. If the immune system is fighting these invaders, these aliens, these adversaries full time, it does not produce a full complement. You can take your blood after you have cleaned it or electrified it, send it to the same laboratory, you will find that two neurotransmitters particularly, interleukin 1, 2, and 3, interferon, have restored themselves to your blood. Interleukin and interferon are considered specifics against cancer cells. A few years ago, if you had cancer and you wanted to buy human interleukin and interferon, it was about $50,000 a dose because animal interleukin and interferon, genetically engineered, will not work on the transcriptase of a human being. But you can make your own. You don't need $50,000 a dose. Just get the boogers out of your blood and your immune system will take care of the cancer. Okay, does that answer it? Very good. Next. Hi, Wayne. Hello. And uh, in case anyone's wondering, I have nothing to do with anyone else named Wayne who sells bogus colloidal products. <laughs> strictly, a, strictly a different Wayne. Uh, Bob, would you tell us about the material that is available from Wayne Green's magazine, 73 Amateur Radio Today? Yeah. How many of you know Wayne Green? He was the publisher of Byte magazine. He publishes about 10 different magazines and the music and the ham radio. 73s. He read my article and he says, Bob, you're lying. I've known Wayne for 30 years. He built a unit and cured some of his friends. He said, damn, I better steal this and publish it. And so he did. And then he got a chap to uh, design one that used uh, four photodiodes. Remember that one, Wayne? And it didn't work very well. And he was using alum aluminum uh, wrapped around the ankles for electrodes. We put the electrodes precisely over the blood paths and the arterial uh, veins, arteries, not veins. <clears throat> I mean, not, uh, yeah, the blood vessel arteries, not the blood vessel veins. And we got about 90% of that energy, which happens to be four to five milliamperes, into the outside of the skin. And by the time that current, four to five milliamperes, penetrates the seven layers between the squamous epithelial, that means the skin and the dandruff, the subcutaneous sebaceous, the superficial fascia lata, ad nauseum, ad nauseum. You get 50 to 100 microamperes left in the blood, and that is all that's required to eliminate the adversary. You have to put in about, <clears throat> oh, a thousand times more current into the skin before it gets into the blood, <clears throat> but you do not need to take the blood out of the body like is shown in these patents, or put a little device with a battery in it, sew it into your arm with surgery. You don't have to do that. You can put this electricity in your wrists, and I'll show you how later if you want to really see it close up. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. I'm about halfway through a parasite program right now using herbs, and at the very beginning of it, I had a lot of trouble because my lymphatic system got overloaded from all the die-off. 
Um, I was wondering uh, how you pace the program so that the eliminative organs are not overloaded. The people who are using black walnut hull extract, wormwood, uh, yama, 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 which was originated by Hazel Parcells and uh, oh, a woman who died recently. The women who do this cure get a thing very similar to premenstrual syndrome. It sort of wrecks the hell out of their hormonal balance and what have you. There's a device on the market which you hold in your palms made by a woman who can't come back to the U.S. because she's in Mexico and there are too many indictments. It does not work because if you put this 30 uh, kilo <coughs> kilohertz into the palms at 2.4 volts, which is what you'll measure under load if you uh, choose to do it, it won't kill the parasites. You can't measure anything in your blood. It just doesn't work. This does work you can prove it by going to a parapsychologist, having a stool test, a blood microscopy test. This will get rid of the parasites in your blood. The other things work to a degree. There are any number of products which might be very, very good. I can name them. One of them is a four-letter word that goes with two other products. But this will do it. Well. The thing you have to worry about here is the die-off rate, Herxheimer's syndrome, H-E-R-X, capital H-E-R-X. The way we get around this is if you're in a terminal condition, we start off at 20 minutes a day, not two hours, a tenth of the time <clears throat> that you would normally take. You drink a tremendous amount of water and liquids to flush your system. If you get a rash on your legs, all the symptoms of too rapid detoxification, you stop, go back down, try it 10 minutes a day, and then build up. We're opening a clinic offshore because we're tired of the FDA. Here we're having the best parasitologists and doctors that money can buy that are going to oversee these people detoxing. We're going to use heat like hot tubs. We plan on using... Uh, the uh, Petrovsky 6000C to pump the lymph system. We're using the Ed Photon Ray, which is like the, the only thing that Royal Rife made that actually worked, the ray tube. We're using a number of things to speed the parting guest. We'll have lymph massage, uh, many, many things that will make this Herxheimer's syndrome practically vanish. They're being monitored to within an inch of their lives, and if they show the slightest bit of distress, they stop right then and there and start over. Uh, one chap we call Vesuvio after the volcano because when he started on this, he got some soft kind of cysts under his scalp. One day they broke, and this yellow-green pus started running down his face. He ran, got a towel, wrapped it around his head like a turban, went screaming to the telephone. I saw him. I went over and saw him. We called him Vesuvio after the volcano. We said, Andy, wouldn't you rather have this stuff out of your body than in where it's been for eight years that we know about? This was when you were first diagnosed with AIDS. Oh, yeah. So he ran back home, started drinking his water faithfully, taking his colloids. He's perfectly fine today, perfectly symptom-free. He had 435,000 HIV particles in his blood. We have his report here. Uh, PCR test. Today he has less than 100. He's considered zero converted and clean. We have hundreds of these. Okay, another question? Yes, I have several. I have several questions for you. Uh, how does this differ from Do Dr. Brzezinski's treatment in Texas? I believe in what he's doing. I think he has a valid... I have sent money to him. I've sent letters of encouragement. <clears throat> this does it electronically. He does his with, uh, pharma well, his own brand of chemicals. And there's a vast difference. This cost $1.32 per cure. I don't know what he's charging down there, but I wish him luck. I think the FDA ought to get off his back. The only reason he's being persecuted is he's curing people. And that's a sin in our free society. 
I was also wondering if you could tell me why, why your process accelerates the efficiency of anything else you take. It's very similar to DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, and it accelerates everything, makes it stronger. Yeah. Why does it do that in, the, in your process? I suggest you get a copy of the paper. It would take me four hours okay, to it. explain to doctors it why is, that is. Is it in here? Yeah, okay. it's in my paper, the references, and our host has a copy of the paper itself that you can see with your own eyes that was done at MIT. Okay, thank uh, you. I have a quick question about dentistry. I'm not a dentist, but during the in the NHF convention, there were several dentists there who were saying that one of the unsolved problems of dentistry was in root canals because the roots are dead and the dentin tubules contain bacteria or pathogens which the normal cleansing procedures do not uh, kill uh, because there is no blood circulation. I was wondering if possibly your magnetic pulsar would tend to kill these. Yes, it does, and I can't specifically answer medical questions because it's a felony in California. They really want to put me in jail, so I, I believe that theory to be true, hypothetically. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Doctor, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your time and your efforts, and uh, may God bless you, too. I want to just take the time Well, to thank, thank you. you, sir. Um, the colloidal silver, how long ostensibly should one take it, and how much a day to maintain health? If you take colloidal silver instead of silver protein, we have not found an upper dose. I've been drinking about a quart of this a day for three years, and I feel just fine. But I don't recommend that you do anything that your intuition doesn't like. I would say take a minimum of four ounces of three to five parts per million of homemade silver colloid without preservatives in the water a day, and this will keep you from any uh, secondary infections, colds, etc., 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 and this will back up the fact that you're getting rid of a lot of toxins from your blood. I think the three have to work together, the magnetic pulsar, the colloids, and the blood cleaning, and we described each one of these fully in the paper, so you do not have to buy anything from anybody or any store or any multi-level promoter, okay? Now, after this question, I'm going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. Yes, go uh, ahead. Please, uh, I have a question. I, if, uh, if one uses uh, your, your, your machine, should he still cleanse his colon, and should he also cleanse his liver? Uh, uh, you know, there is a procedure to cleanse the liver with the olive oil. I'm not following what you're saying, sir. Mm. Uh, uh, my question is, would you still suggest to cleanse the colon and yes. the other liver? So th that machine does not substitute those cleanses. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not following but about 30% of this. Could you hand the microphone to the gentleman? Let him explain. Yeah. He wants to know if you should use colon cleansers in conjunction with the machine. It and would liver. probably speed up, the colon cleansers would probably speed up the detoxification. Okay. We have a lot of people who try to combine this with colonic therapy, with lymph massage, with radiation, with heat, with Petrovsky uh, muscle stimulation to pump the lymph. That is not necessary, but it could not hurt. That's my opinion on Thank you, sir. Rich, we're out. Of yeah. What about liver cleansing? Liver. Well, the old homeopathic remedy is olive oil and lemon juice, but there are a number of liver cleansers. I think these are definitely helpful. Now, give me a second here. This headline was from the uh, Orange County Register, December 10th, 96. Untreatable flu <coughs> strain hits hard locally. And you've read that the Class A flu strain is amenable to known antibiotics, but the Class B, they're dying right and left if they're old, infirm, or young. The problem, boys and girls, if you've heard Len Horowitz, is that there are dozens of designer viruses that are just waiting 
to be unleashed. Some that you have heard of are Ebola, Hantavirus, Marlberg, etc., etc. When these things are put out to kill us old guys, they have to re the New World Order, I am told, has to reduce the world population by about 50 to 55 percent. And that means you, and you, and you, and you. If you have one of these in the medicine cabinet, no virus known has ever been known to be refractory to colloids and blood electrification by the laboratories like myself that are doing underground work. <clears throat> and that means that all of these untreatables are duck soup when there is no antibiotic, no vaccine, and they may never be. This, to my mind, the millennium in medicine started on March the 11th, 1990, at Albert Einstein College. I wish I had invented it. I did not. I just pulled it out of oblivion, made it practical, made it <clears throat> in vivo, that means outside of the body instead of in vitro, and I'm giving it to the world, and I hope I don't have to come back here again. <laughs> And it's here now, it does work, and take back your power. You've been an incredibly great audience. Get a paper. I want to thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Dr. Beck, for this very enlightening presentation.